What's up guys you are watching Tuck TV and today we're going to talk about Bangalore Open Air So we're here to talk about G-Shock Bangalore Open Air 2017 which happened on 1st of July that's about a week ago yeah so coming toward Bangalore Open Air actually is 6 years ago it was started by Salman who envisioned to have one of the biggest metal festivals which india has ever seen and it's been happening every year since then this is a brand which has actually brought in a lot of big hitters like creator destruction rotten christ and a lot more so this year's headliners were nile and corona we were supposed to catch marduk for the first time in india but then due to a couple of issues they were not able to make it there's no word out on what the issue actually is so we don't have a lot of information on it but uh, Yeah, from what we hear, it might be a couple of visa issues where which they couldn't make it here for. Cryptos, Speed Trip, and Galaxy Crusher were the supporting acts. So we want to talk a little about the atmosphere of Bangalore Open Air. Yeah. I think uh, overall good. Uh, we might have been witness to about anywhere between one thousand to one thousand two hundred uh, people. Yeah, and then that's a fair count if you actually look at uh, you know the normal crowds what you see in most of the metal gigs. One of the main factors when we might not have seen a bigger crowd was the factor of Maruk you know, not being there. I mean that is quite a significant factor. So the gates opened at three o'clock, but uh, we obviously couldn't make it in time because of Bangalore's traffic. If you guys have not heard, it's horrible out right here. So let's talk a little bit about the bands that played. Um, you know, the opening acts were uh, Galaxy Crusher, Speed Trip, Cryptos. So Galaxy Crusher is a death metal band from US, and from what we hear, they played a really kick-ass show. Uh, Speed Trip also played their set list, which was okay. They're a good band. Started about a year, a year ago, yeah. Two thousand sixteen was when they started. You should definitely check them out. And then, of course, Cryptos. They're pretty much like the veterans of the Indian metal scene right now. So yeah, they played a pretty kick-ass show. And for those people who don't know it, they released an album just a while back. I think it was what um, eight to nine months back. You can check that out. There's a link in the description below. So their playlist had both some new and some old songs, and they definitely kicked a lot of ass. They definitely did get the crowd running. There was some mosh pits, you know, a lot of uh, enthusiasm among people. Yeah, and a lot of support shown from everyone who was present there. We also had a chance to catch up with Metal Wani's Mr. White Egg Wani. Hello, sir. Yeah, White Egg Wani from Metal Wani. Mr. Metal Wani, how's Bangalore open air? Good, good, good lineup, good sound, good vibes. Love it. Crypto's on stage right now, killing it. Be sure to check them out. There's a link in the description below. So, of course, coming back to the overall atmosphere of the event, there were a lot of stalls, a lot uh, of good food. Oh yeah, there was actually yeah. a lot of good food over there. Essentially, every metal gig needs good food and good beer. Uh, I don't know how good the beer was because I didn't have any. Yeah, I had and I validated. Uh, apart from the liquor and uh, food there was a lot of uh, merchandise that was available uh, headbangers online yeah they were one of the major ones present there and you can get a lot of their stuff right down there yeah some really good merch good quality materials uh, unique prints you know it was it was definitely worth it right so coming to the headliners the first one to hit the stage was the swiss thrash legend scorono and Trust me, they destroyed the stage. Okay, I do want to talk about this band a little more because they were a surprise. Yeah, I mean, um, to be honest, yeah, we just heard quite a bit about them, but not completely, and they just blew us straight out. Absolutely. So Corona really introduced progressiveness into thrash. 
Yeah, you don't see a lot of thrash bands who are actually incorporating a lot of progressive material. It's always, you know, in your face music and never, you know, let's talk about timing, let's talk about this, it's just in your face. Yeah, so, I know. Yeah. I think what you have to keep in mind is Corona, they started out in the 90s, but then... Yeah. They oh, no, they actually started off in the 80s. 80s, that's right. Yeah. But somewhere around the 90s, they stopped playing and then they resumed in 2010. And I'm pretty much sure if that wasn't the case, they would be one of the most ruling thrash metal bands out there. Definitely, definitely. They, yeah. they played a couple of amazing numbers. Mask Jekyll, that's one that really stuck with me. You should yeah. definitely check them out. What really stands out for me is that I have not heard a thrash metal band use the flanger effect on the guitars to this extent. Exactly. They incorporate a lot of different elements which bring out that atmosphere into thrash. Yeah. Know, not just riffage. I mean, three-piece band. You've got the yeah. drummer, you've got a bass guitarist who's also doing vocals and then you've got the uh, lead guitarist. But when you listen to them, it really sounds like a five-piece or a six-piece. They, they, they were like yeah. massive on stage. <laughs> so next on stage, from the ashes of the Egyptian Empire, from the banks of the river Nile. 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 Yeah. So nothing new to introduce here. Nile, amazing technical death metal band, played an amazing gig. The standout for me personally has to be Anus, Slayer of the Gods. You know, they ended with this and trust me, the the experience was ungodly, man. You know, the way the mosh pits were going on, the way it sounded, the sheer devastation brought about by that one song was yeah, unmatched. I mean, there'd be mosh pits like this. And then there was this. So talking about the mosh pits, everyone out there was having a good time. It was really a good time yeah. for us, for all the people out there. Uh, good turnout of people, men, women. But you know, there was a bunch uh, of people who sort of mosh with different reasons. Yeah, the whole ethical aspect of your mosh pit was very scarce among these people. And you could see it happening all throughout the show. It's not like they used to anchor just for a minute or two and then go out, but then you know, it, it kind of does bring down the whole morale of the mosh pit when things like this are going on. And trust me, it actually hurts. So, if you're gonna mosh, please mosh properly. There is an ethic to it. Do follow it. You know when someone is moshing to have fun for the heck of moshing, yeah. you know, properly. And you know when someone's moshing with some basic purpose of vendetta. Yeah, I mean, never target people, guys. I mean, you go hit random people, you get hit by random people. That. That's the rules. I mean, just don't do that. That's what happens. And and it's also the factor of unethical hitting. I mean, like, you know, nothing on the face. There were people pulling people down and then trying to hit them. That is not the right way. Another thing I want to talk about is people who were getting wasted at the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that was predominantly a big issue there, down there. Yeah, like, you I, see a lot of I don't get it. Why would you spend all that money, come here, get wasted, not be able to stand, not be able to focus on the show, not be able to look at the bands. Why? I, I guess it's their idea of fun. I mean, I, but, I think they, that, but it's like the most horrible experience what you can have when you come to a concert. Yeah, you're absolutely. there to have the experience of live sound. So if you're out of your senses, guys, I don't think you're even going to... Might as well get drunk at home and listen to one of their discs. Like, it's essentially going to be the same thing. Right? I remember this clearly. Nile was setting up their list and you know, they were like playing their biggest songs out there and there's this dude in front of me who was wasted on the ground from then on to the rest of the show. So, yeah, essentially you lose out on everything what you have built up to that moment. So, I mean, we get it. Okay. Beer, metal, fine. But just yeah. use your head, man. You paid money. You're going to lose out. <laughs> oh, and by the way, the thing which we need to talk about now is the whole factor of Post gig, what happened to all these drunk people? Yeah, that I, I think uh, what we what we want to highlight is uh, the cops were around, obviously, because you know they they there to take care of the decorum and you know the overall uh, peace exactly. of this entire show. And uh, 
of course you know there were people who were getting detained for reasons and uh, yeah I, I think you know the show went off well but the stupidest thing uh, at the end of the evening with people yeah. who were getting caught drunk and drive I, I think that really is dumb because here in Bangalore we have no shortage of cab services uh, it's not like this was in some vague part of the city it's right here there was no problems in terms of uh, transportation exactly and neither is it the number of things that you know that there are less number of cabs yeah just you know you can you can pool in with other people you can do a lot of other things why drink and drive another point we want to make here why we're stressing on it is eventually this will become the image of metal shows and that's not going to do well for us so remember we are the guys who are going to make our images but overall an amazing show great fun great music now of course not everything was you know all peaches and roses uh, there were technical issues yeah, there uh, was a bit of technical issues, issues on both uh, corona and uh, nile yeah. uh, but corona got an easy fix i mean like they got back on track very easily yeah, i think essentially it was a bass guitarist who was having yes, a little bit exactly. of problem with yeah. with uh, their uh, the sound sound yeah. yeah but that was fixed very quickly i think yeah. the biggest problem uh, that was faced was by carl sanders of nile he yeah. he had a really difficult time especially like during the rhythm section uh, even for the audience per se we couldn't hear it that well but it didn't actually ruin the complete feel of the show that's the one thing which i would like to point out at this we understand these things are going to happen in shows and yeah, yeah it, it happened you know it's, it's there's nobody to blame yeah um, but at the end of the day it happened and uh, and i lost a good maybe 15 to 20 minutes on the set list which means we I don't know what the issue was I I don't get the logic of the curfew but I don't know whether this was set by the government or uh, whether this was set by the resort uh, where this happened because there was also another event that was yeah, uh, we the, don't know yeah it might be one of the few reasons or a combination of them but then yeah we aren't clear at this point I would also like to highlight that uh, the location chosen this time was really good uh, definitely um, full points there to Salman and to Bangalore Open Air because uh, it was located relatively in the city it wasn't obscure a uh, lot of parking we didn't have issues finding the place didn't have issues parking so good one yeah. and trust me whenever it comes to gigs like this parking becomes the main issue in a lot of places yeah, absolutely yeah so kudos for taking care of that anyway so that was Bangalore Open Air and uh, that brings us to the end of this video log So did you go to Bangalore Open Air? What did you think about it? Let us know in the comments below. Yeah. We want to know your opinions. What you felt about the whole gig. Now, where it lacked, where it stood out. So give us a thumbs up if you like this video and share it so that all your friends can know about the same. And don't forget to subscribe, hit that subscribe button right over there. And as always, stay metal.